Next up is Wesley Clark, and this is from Bedford, New Hampshire. This is taped coverage. Many of these speeches all happening at the same time tonight. a plane problem. We have to get out of here very quick so we can get to South Carolina. Yeah! I want to introduce my husband. Who is the best husband, the best father, the best grandfather, And the next president of the United States, West Clark. Thank you. Well, thank you, dear. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Barbara Lawton. And thanks to all of you who are here with us tonight. Thank you. You made this possible. I've seen you carrying the signs in the morning on the corners. I've seen you with your, I've seen you late at night with your heads bowed over the tables, making the last telephone calls. You are magnificent, and I thank you. But four months ago, four months ago, we weren't even in this race. We had no money. We had no staff. We had no office. All we had was hope and a vision for a better America. Four months later, we came into New Hampshire as one of the elite eight. Tonight, we leave New Hampshire as one of the final four. There's still a couple of more rounds to go. And the stakes couldn't be higher. Our party has to offer a vision for America. A vision that will keep us strong, abroad, and safe at home. We must beat George W. Bush I can and I will.
So we're, we're heading south. We're heading west, and we ain't slowing down until the final buzzer sounds. These last four months have been the start of an incredible journey. Today was just the first battle in our campaign to take America back. Thanks to you and the people of New Hampshire, we'll be leaving New Hampshire tonight a smarter, better, stronger, and even more determined candidate. Never, never underestimate, never underestimate what a determined soldier can accomplish when he's fighting for his country. And we're fighting for this country. So we're going to march onward, state after state, until we send George W. Bush right back to that ranch in Texas. Now, this is my first election, and I've enjoyed every minute of it, and I can't thank the people of New Hampshire enough. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people told me not to get into this race. They said I should leave politics to the politician. No, they, they said I was just an outsider. I was just a soldier from down south. But if there's one thing I learned during my 34 years in the United States Army, it's this, that real leadership comes from deciding and doing, not talking and debating. And I simply couldn't stand by and watch while this country that I and so many others have fought for unravels before our very eyes. I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand by and watch while the rich were handed one tax cut after another and eight million Americans struggled to make ends meet without work. I couldn't stand by and watch as 44 million Americans lived without basic health care 
and life-saving drugs that their families needed. I couldn't stand by and watch as 12 million children languished in poverty in the wealthiest nation of the world. And I couldn't stand by and watch as special interest cut backroom deals with people in power. And I couldn't stand by and watch as day after day our servicemen and women lost their lives in an unnecessary war in Iraq. So I didn't stand by. I stepped forward. I stepped forward and that's why I'm here tonight, because I have higher hopes for America. I see an America that's determined to be good and that dares to be great. I responded to a call from people like you, people who long for a better America, an America that values old-fashioned leadership, not old-style politicians. I responded to a call for change. Change to an administration that puts the privileged above the people. Change to an administration that plays politics with national security. Change to an administration that holds themselves above and apart from the American people that they serve. Change from an administration that puts politics above principle and special interests above national interests. That we must change. The bottom line was, I was just sick and tired of Republicans and Washington insiders crowing about family values when it was clear to me that they themselves didn't value America's families. Because America's working families deserve better. They deserve the opportunity to work and make a decent wage. They deserve a chance to put a few dollars in the bank and save for their children's future. They deserve a tax cut to help pay their bills. They deserve the truth from the Commander-in-Chief. They deserve a leader willing to stand up to the real threats of Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. They deserve top-notch health care and the drugs to stay healthy. They deserve a first-class education and a shot at being just a little better off than their parents. This is what working families deserve, and that's why I'm running to be President of the United States.
I know what it's like to struggle to make ends meet and watch every penny that you have. I didn't grow up with much. My father died when I was four. He left us with less than a few months' rent. My mom took a job as a secretary to make the ends meet. And that's why, as president, I will never, ever forget where I'm from and who I'm for, America's working families. And these aren't my values alone. They're Democratic Party values. That's what this party is all about. And we've got to open the doors in this party to every person who shares our values. Because when we take on George Bush this fall, we want everyone to join us, no matter where you're from, what your background is, or what your party registration might say. I can never repay the people of New Hampshire for their kindness and friendship over the last few months. And I want to thank all of my supporters, my staff, all the veterans who worked so hard, my state director, Steve Bouchard, our state chairs, Dudley Dudley, Jim Norman, Susan Putney, and George Bruno. Our steering committee chair, Syl Dupuy, John and Mary Rao, Bill Cashin, and all of those who've helped us get our message out. And I also want to thank all our volunteers who made the phone calls, licked the envelopes, knocked on the doors in frigid weather day after day because it was the men and women like you who got me into this race and we wouldn't be anywhere without you. And I want to congratulate John Kerry, Howard Dean, and John Edwards. They're good men, they've done good work, they've run great campaigns in this state. Let me finish up by saying this. If you're happy with the direction of our country, then support the politicians who are running it. But if you think we can build a better America and you want someone who's part of the solution, then I am your candidate and I'm asking for your support. The other morning at a veterans event, I met a vet from World War II. As, as I was turning to leave, he grabbed my hand and he looked me in the eye. He said, General, I want you to listen to me. This election isn't about me, he said, and it isn't about you. It's about the future of our country. And he said, as you go on, that is something you must never, ever forget. Yeah. Well, I won't forget that. I won't forget it. I won't forget it. That's why I'm here tonight. That's why I'm in this race. That's why we're going to march on, meeting one test at a time with the same gritty determination until we take back this country for its rightful owners, the people of the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.
That's General Wesley Clark thanking his supporters at the event center in Bedford, New Hampshire tonight. General Clark has a very busy day tomorrow. All the candidates are trying to get out of uh, Manchester pretty quickly this evening because of the impending snowstorm. General Clark's agenda tomorrow includes Charleston, South Carolina at 8, Tulsa at noon, Albuquerque in the afternoon, and Phoenix in the evening. A very busy day for him. Well, we're